Hi there. In this lecture, we see Paul Saladin Lennart against Capablanca in round six of the 1911 San Sebastian tournament. So Lennart has been up there, ranked as high as 15 according to chess metrics, quite a dangerous opponent. So d4, we have d5 from Capablanca, c4, e6, knight c3, and now Capablanca chooses the semi tarash c5 is played, e3, knight f6, knight f3, knight c6, bishop d3, d takes c4, bishop takes c4, bishop e7, both sides castle, and now actually a rather interesting move indeed, it's very rarely played nowadays, queen e2, this is an interesting gambit to say the least. Quite often nowadays, d takes c5 will result in a symmetrical pawn structure, but white, if anything, has the small edge. Also, a3 with the same kind of idea, d takes c5. White ends up, it's near equality, that's the thing. There's not too much fun to be had in general. Okay, but we have here queen e2, so this is a bit of fun, offering a pawn. C takes d4, E takes d4. If white tries anything clever like rook d1 here, black has e5. If E takes d4, E takes d4, h3, a6, white does have bishop e3, and perhaps white can be annoying like this. So this is an interesting way of trying to use this pin on f6 with knight d5 ideas. So, for example, here, knight d5, and perhaps white should just repeat, for example, in this example. So, yeah, there is some interest with rook d1, but it's not entirely convincing, especially if white wants to do more than draw. But with e takes d4, it becomes a gambit. Knight takes d4. There's no time to play rook d1, because that's check. Knight takes e2 is check. So, knight takes, queen takes d4, rook d1, and Capablanca offers the exchange of queens, queen g4. It turns out here, yeah, white makes a very severe weakening move, f3, trying to keep the queens on. It turns out, though, that actually queen takes g4 has something going for it. This is rather invisible compensation. But there is actually bishop e2 with the idea of pressurizing black's queen side. You can see these pieces, especially c8 bishop, sometimes a problem bishop. So to have a strong counterpart here, bearing down on the queen side could actually be quite good compensation for the pawn here. This should be around equal if black gives back the pawn especially. This is about this is actually, you know, this is actually quite kind of interesting for white. Uh, so and if if a6 actually, you know, black is in a bit of a bind for the pawn. So yeah, this is pretty subtle stuff. This is, uh, you know, locking down the queen side. So there was an opportunity, basically, for a little bit of compensation. But White's idea, undoubtedly, was to actually keep the queens on, not to play like this. This seems rather subtle to play queen takes with the idea of bishop e2 to f3. Very, very subtle indeed as a compensation mechanism. So, yeah, just to put this on the board again, yeah, it's it's a bit tricky. Bishop g4, this this actually, you know, this scenario, if anything, it's in, you know, White's favour. Okay, yeah, so that's interesting. So anyway, f3 was played. It's a weakening move. We have queen h5, and now knight e4, and now Capablanca plays an annoying pin, queen e5. He could play it in a different way. He could play b6. And if bishop g5, bishop b7, not minding the doubled pawns, this is fine for black. Black's got the advantage there. He could also play knight takes e4. You know, if queen takes e4, queen g6, this position black should be with advantage as well. But queen e5 is pretty annoying. We have knight takes f6, check. So any options here? The thing is, you might think, hold on, what about this this pin, bishop g5 pinning to e7? Is that any good? Actually, black has a nifty resource here. Can you spot what that is for ten points? 
that is an interesting nifty resource based on the queen being on e5. Yeah, there's actually knight g4, which hits the, the bishop. And it also kind of hits h2. So if f takes, we take the bishop. And this is to black's favor. And if basically if bishop takes e7, that's a disaster. Queen takes h2 check. Queen h1 is mate. Yeah, that's that's a pretty interesting situation of the knight g4. So bishop g5 can be ruled out. Bishop d3, black's strongest is to play knight d5 and then look forward to a nice easy development. You know, this is getting the queens off. If bishop d2, we can actually afford to take on b2. So this is interesting as well. If king h1, we can just build up with rook d8 and bishop d7 and bishop c6. So yeah, objectively, this is the way to play it. But uh, we could just get the queens off by force. Uh, with bishop takes e4 here, f5, we can just get the queens off by force with a small edge. Okay, so anyway, in the game, white played knight takes f6 check so we're getting a transition into an end game now we have queen takes e5 bishop takes e5 a4 b6 a5 at least white is trying to weaken black's pawns a bit bishop b7 a slightly more accurate might be b takes here with the idea of bishop c7 bishop b6 check this position looks to be quite nice for black but bishop b7 was played a takes a takes a pair of rooks come off b3 here to limit the damage bishop e3 straight off the bat seems useful even if b2's taken away if we have this position we have rook d7 and here rook d6 and we should actually in this position have good chances to draw Black's outer pass pawn has been taken away. Yeah, it's going to be a struggle here. But anyway, b3 was played, and we have a nice move preventing a rook entry, bishop c6, and also supporting b5. So that's a very nice positional move. Bishop e3, b5, bishop e2. And now another nice move, preparing the king to enter the position f6, giving f7 as an entry point towards the center. Rook c1, and now forcing a pair of rooks off, rook a1. Rook takes a1, bishop takes a1, king f2. The kings come towards the center. King e1, e5, king d2, king e6. Bishop d3, hitting the h7 pawn. That's protected with g6, h4, and now f5. b4, and now e4 is played. Also interesting here is h5. That is a nice position for black. But e4 quite committal. F takes quite confident that Kempelanka can uh, win from this even more simplified position. If f takes e4, bishop e2, king d5. This is also, you know, this is also nice for black. But uh, bishop takes e4. We have bishop takes b5. This changes the picture of things significantly. White now has this pass pawn. Black has a three to two pawn or three to one pawn majority after G two is taken out. So that's quite a committal decision, indeed. Bishop takes B five, but uh, yeah, White didn't clearly fancy this position. Okay, I mean maybe the B four pawn could be a, a target later along with the h4 pawn they're both on dark squares so okay we have this situation which seems interesting in more imbalanced now bishop takes g2 we have bishop a6 bishop f6 so hitting the pawn gaining an, gaining an interesting tempo strategically relevant for trying to blockade potentially this b pawn yeah there are kind of roots here Around here, this route's going potentially you know, to blockade the B pawn. 
if bishop so bishop f2 was played let's have a look at b5 in action bishop takes h4 b6 there's bishop g3 here straight off the bat that blockades very quickly so bishop f2 bishop e5 b5 h6 so trying to dissolve this pawn to get the two to zero pawn majority this is actually believe it or not an inaccuracy h6 is a little bit of an inaccuracy it seems king d7 might be more accurate you know this way of playing it you might wonder what why would this be more accurate why is this more accurate the thing is with h6 white makes a mistake here b6 it turns out that actually there is a, a kind of interesting undermining aspect of h5 here with this pawn chain could be prone to undermining and in fact can you see what white missed here based on an undermining opportunity for 100 points what did white miss yeah because white should really try and shatter the these pawns undermine them they're connected and powerful but with bishop c8 check this is interesting because if king f6 then we have bishop b6 and here this is dangerous you know bishop d8 check and b6 is actually rather dangerous bishop c7 b7 this is just going to be equal white's going to have enough resources here to hold this and also if king d6 then we use h5 shattering the kind of pawn majority making them unconnected you don't really want past pawns which are connected being thrown at you so it kind of disconnects them and this is actually an equal position it shatters the power of the pawns pawns of the soul of chess Felidor. so yes that that was an interesting move which is a mistake which actually helped you know then we kind of question that h6 was actually maybe an inaccuracy it's funny stuff it does require high precision but this is a mistake and now you can see the pawns they're connected that's the power of pass pawns being connected quite often h takes h h bishop c h check this is under less harmful circumstances <laughs> there's no undermining that the pawns are still connected and happy I'm happy I'm happy they're both happy together these these pawns they haven't been broken apart Bishop c6 King f1 Bishop d5 King e2 Bishop c4 check King d2 f4 they're being pushed Bishop g4 Bishop e6 Bishop f3 and now they're being pushed again Bishop e4 Bishop e4 sorry g3 now here you one has to be careful so g g3 is good bishop g4 one step at a time king e1 f3 bishop e3 now here bishop d6 this is a very careful move if f2 that's rushing and, and blowing the whole thing white could just take on f2 thanks very much it's going to be drawn you know this position you know it's going to be drawn so the pawns have to be maintained bishop d6 we have b7 king e5 bishop c6 blockading now bishop b8 again you know we can't be in a rush here because there's blockade opportunities if g2 there's king f2 even position so bishop b8 we have king f1 and now bishop h5 king g1 king f5 the king wants to actually use the corner route to help herd the past pawns very interesting bishop d5 king g4 trying to get into this corner potentially we have bishop e6 check king h4 bishop d4 and this this sets a bit of a funny trap actually that if black horrifically blundered uh, you know white is actually threatening bishop f6 you know checkmate here <laughs> there's a horrific blunder 
you know, just waiting to be made. Let's say that was played. Bishop f6 is checkmate. So Kempelang has to be a bit wary, a bit wary here. Okay, it's difficult to really blunder like that because you really want, wouldn't generally also you'd be concerned about Bishop a7. But yeah, Bishop g4 was played. We have Bishop takes g4, King takes g4, King f1. King h3, yeah, the king's using this corner. Bishop g1, it looks as though the king's not getting to h2. But now we see a very, very interesting move. Remember I mentioned Bishop c7 would be a blunder because of Bishop a7. Guess what black plays here and why for 100 points. Okay, the thing is the bishop's cutting the king from h2, so actually Bishop c7 relying on the kind of weakness of the last move with the strategic imperative being able to promote your pass pawns and destroy the opponents. Anything else, if g2, you know, king f2 is even. This is, there's nothing going on here because if king g4, we you know, king e3, this is even. You might want to hold on a sec, hold on a sec, king's rush. What about... Bishop a7 check, then we just we just take that out and then we queen actually. So white will be winning there. So it is tricky. Bishop c7 is a key move here, inviting this kind of weakness of the last move. So we see our yeah, weakness of the last move in end games. That's a weakness of the last move. It's losing energy to control h2. And in fact the king goes into h2 now. Very accurate. If g2 it blows it again, king f2. This position is just blown, you know. There's nothing going on here. It's even. So King H2, this is breaking point. B8, queening. But now, what would you play with black? Be careful. Black to play and win. What would you play for 100 points? It's tempting to take the queen, but... Maybe, but g2 is more accurate. That ends the game. If we took the queen, the thing is the bishop pins the pawn. And if f2, then here, you know, bishop c7, king h3, and bishop b6, and if g2, king takes f2, and the bishop then controls that square is going to be a draw. So g2 is the way to do it, high precision. And white resigned. If king e1, then we take the queen. And the, the thing is, this is very different, king h1. It's very different. We're threatening to queen. If king f2, we you know, we queen. And if bishop a7, it doesn't help because we queen and then we're, we're going to queen the other one then after f2. So yes, a fascinating game. Real accuracy in the end, getting the king to a key square to herd the pawns. White missed his shot to destroy these connected past pawns. There's a lesson in there about connected pawns, you know, trying to maintain them to defend against connected pawns, trying to break their connectivity, dismantle them. So yes, yeah, interesting end game lessons, end game precision. Yeah, Capablanca he doesn't mind the end games because he's quite brutal on his tactics as well. Weaknesses of the last move, end game imperatives, making sure your pass pawns are more important than the opponents, or your opponents are being obliterated while yours are queening. But yes, great stuff. This helps the reputation of Capablanca in end games in particular that he can just win from these quite simple positions. But it was a gambit, but. Uh, yeah, it's 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 easy to say, you know, to refute a gamut, but to actually get rid of the opponent's counterplay, etc. You know, it's a different task. So Queen E5 is a very neat move with lots of things going on for it, and you know the simplification stuff, stopping the entry point with Bishop C6. This is actually, you know, a very very precise move. Engine engines love this move, Bishop C6 here, and yeah, progress was starting to be made. So a really interesting game of converting an extra pawn systematically not being worried about it going to near dust but here the connected pawns yes 
There is one little slip up later, which was mentioned. Uh, you know, before the pawns are connected there. Let's go to the slip up point. So this was an inaccuracy because bishop c h a. It's it's fascinating stuff. There is a major accuracy factor towards end days. You know, of king d6 h5. There's a major accuracy factor in end games. You wouldn't have thought that. You know, they look kind of more simple, but there's a need for greater accuracy, indeed. Okay. I hope you enjoyed this. Got some points from it. Thanks so much.